Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and today I'm here with Joe Lozen, the man behind GardnerGuns.com, and we're at the Institute of Military Technology, taking a look at some of the really fabulous gun displays they have, including this very interesting older piece. Um, what is this, Joe? This is a five-barrel Nordenfeldt gun, and uh, this particular one takes a rimmed black powder cartridge, uh, just one of the main competitors in the early days of the manually operated machine gun. And this was actually probably the, the most successful of the designs, although in America we used the Gatling primarily, the Nordenfeldt was the main competitor over in Europe. And these were uh, often used in naval applications as well, yeah. which we don't see much on Gatlings. No, it, because this was actually light enough to be put on smaller mounts, this is not uh, a naval mount, um, it could also be moved to the top to the top sails of the ship and fired down onto the decks. Um, compared to the Gatling and other gardeners, etc., it was actually a fairly light piece, and so you could actually take a small landing party of a few men and carry this gun ashore with a carriage, etc. So, uh, okay. small and more portable than the others. Now, probably the most obvious uh, visible difference is that this doesn't have a crank handle. A rotating, rotating crank. This has just a, a forward and backward. That's right. The action for this gun, as opposed to the Gatling, which most people know made the barrels rotate, these barrels are in a horizontal plane, and there's a large action block. The large action block is this, and it's about a 15 pound chunk of steel with a few bolts that are um, screwed into the front end. And what you would do when you're firing this gun is you literally move the handle back and forth. And this one is uh, moving on me a little bit. I need you to steady that. And you just heard how it cocks and fires when it goes into battery. A really interesting part of the Nordenfeld is in the heat of battle, if you did not bring this handle all the way back, you could bring it most of the way back. The action block would actually um, move back, but it wouldn't cock the triggers. Ooh. So you could actually cycle this weapon extract the cartridges, drop them through, and partially load, and still not fire. That's not um, it Basically, it just wouldn't fire the gun. <laughs> so this is, this is the magazine, mm -hmm. and it's got five slots in here, one for each barrel. Yep. And it's hollow inside. If you take a look down in here, it's just empty slots. Yep, and basically, if you see from the front end of the magazine, um, there are hollows, and these are basically cells for the cartridges to feed down. Now, the interesting thing about this particular magazine is that it's a straight side. There were two different ones. One is straight all the way down, and one has a stepped toe. And what that did is it dropped the cartridges differently. This one, they would all sit in and feed in one at a time. The interesting thing with the other magazine is because it was skinnier, the cartridges would sit up, and then as they got to the final position, they would rotate down and drop in. So it was just one of the different concepts. and, and that particular magazine, the second style with the stepped toe, they also had a selector on the side which would cut off the feed of the magazine so that you could actually cut off the feed and remove the magazine and, uh, and recharge it but leave it loaded. That's right. If you tried to pull this off while there was still ammo, it would just <laughs> bleh, fall out all over the place. Yes. Let's take a look, take off this magazine. Okay. And okay. go ahead and open that up. Let's see what it looks like inside. And what we have inside here is so we'll move this handle out of the way. You can see the steel action block. You can see the bolts that are screwed into the face. You can see the feed tray. And when this comes back, you can also watch that the speed valve will slide over. OK, so what you're hearing there is you've cocked the trigger cone and you've moved over. Interestingly, this particular gun, even though it's set up for rimmed cartridges, which is what these fat bolts were, it has the, um, the steel secondary plate on the bottom that is typically only found on the um, rimless cartridges. Hmm. Uh, so f not sure what was going on exactly with this, but it has the steel plate and it has this right here. These steel fingers would actually hold the cartridge in place as it drops in okay. so that when you went into battery, um, there you go when you went into battery, it would still be supporting that. Wow, that's actually a lot stiffer than... Uh... Oh. 
All right, so, and right there, you'll notice the gun is fully home and in battery, but hasn't fired at all yet. And it's this last bit of motion where the bolts have locked into the sides, the action is fully home, and you have two wings that go in and lock into the steel. They literally cam into the steel frame and retain okay. the pressure as it's firing. Okay. Um, you can actually see that over here in a second Nordenfeld, and basically these two fingers, when this handle goes into battery, these cams move this forward and these two ears project into the sides and lock the gun closed. And that's how, that's how that works. Okay. Basically, as the gun goes into battery, you've cocked the trigger comb at the rear of the gun and there are small hammers, literally hammers, on <laughs> springs. And they're being held back at the moment. Now, as you go forward, this one's really okay. stiff. As you go forward, and this is much stiffer than most that I've ever touched, um, you get to the point where the whole system is closed and locked, and then the gun fires. And you'll notice as we do this slowly, they do not fire at one time, but they fire sequentially. And go ahead and listen to this as we... So there you go. In the very last five bit rounds. of the stroke, it fires the five rounds. And it fires them, um, from what I have seen, fires from the center, out, 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 out. And uh, just an interesting thing. And we should point out, there weren't a lot of these made, not like we think of mass production today. So a lot of the, the guns have some kind of, they, they often have individual, almost personality, and definitely individual history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it happens that for the Nordenfeld, believe it or not, this was one of the main contenders, and so they were everywhere. They, they, you actually found a lot of them. Okay. Um, the U.S. military, and this is a fact that most people don't know, U.S. military actually adopted three <laughs> Nordenfelds. Um, it happens that during the Spanish-American War, the, uh, we took delivery of two cruisers that were built and were supposed to be delivered to a South American country, but we took over the contracts. They were delivered to the U.S. with Nordenfelds installed, and we didn't have enough of the 6 millimeter Lee Navy diggers mm -hmm. to replace them. So the U.S. actually proofed and accepted the guns, and, uh, and they are out there. Uh, very interesting, beautiful pieces, but uh, do know that they, the U.S. actually had three, Nor three Nordenfelds. Cool. Um, so if anyone out there has, is fortunate enough to have one of these guns um, and needs, needs to try and figure out something or, or has some problems with it, mm -hmm. um, do you have information you can give to people? I, is that I do, and I'm absolutely uh, happy to help anyone get theirs going. I, I don't really do work on them. Uh, I, I have made parts for pretty much all of them, uh, but you know, if you need help getting yours running, give me a call. <laughs> okay, and that's GardnerGuns.com. Yeah. All right. Well, Joe, I'd like to thank you for coming on and talking to us. Yeah. And of course, we'd like to thank the Institute of Military Technology for letting us take a look at these two guns, among their many other cool pieces. And uh, thank you guys for watching. <laughs>